Higher Physics Notes, Unit 2, Section 3, Nuclear Reactions. And this part looks at nuclear fission reactions. Well, the word fission means uh, splitting. Think of the fissure in a rock. And nuclear fission is the process whereby a neutron is fired at a large uranium atom usually uranium 235, which is quite fissionable, and the addition of this neutron to the uranium 235 um, temporarily makes it uranium 236, which is really very unstable. And so the unstable uranium 236 begins to split into a, a dumbbell shape like that. And then the process completes by the uranium splitting into two uh, smaller nuclei called uh, daughter nuclei um, with the release of two or three other neutrons as well. Now the crucial thing here is that as well as these neutrons and the two smaller nu uh, nuclei we have energy released. And it's that energy which is the point of this reaction, this nuclear fission reaction, which was first developed in the early to mid 20th century. Now, what's actually going on here uh, in nuclear terms can be uh, described by a nuclear reaction uh, like this. So we have our uranium which of course is atomic number 92 and the particular isotope of uranium that splits well when the neutron is fired in is uranium 235. Now typically that um, uranium plus a neutron will temporarily go to uranium-236, but I'm going to miss out that stage and just go straight to the end point. And typically we'll get two smaller daughter nuclei, like Krypton-92. Um, and Barium. Barium's got atomic number 56. Uh, typically 141 for barium. So these are the daughter nuclei, and the uranium-235 is called the parent uh, nucleus. Let's not forget we have three neutrons, plus the all-important energy in the form of heat and gamma radiation. Now, um, the important thing here is that when you add up the mass of all the particles on the left-hand side and compare it with the mass of the particles on the right-hand side, there is a mass loss. So the crucial thing there is that mass is lost in inverted commas during the 
fission reaction. The amount of mass is, that, that's lost is very small in any individual reaction, but because there are so many of these reactions taking place in even a gram of uranium-235 that it adds up to quite a substantial amount of uh, energy. And Einstein showed that the, the lost mass actually is not lost, it's been converted into energy. And of course his famous equation E is mc squared um, describes the amount of energy produced by this lost mass. So there's the lost mass in kilograms. That's obviously the speed of light, all squared. And this is the energy released in joules. Let's do a worked example then to see how the equation works. So <clears throat> let's imagine that we have uranium 235 and its neutron is fired in to stimulate the, the fission. This is a stimulated fission, it's not spontaneous. And in our example, let's imagine that the daughter nuclei are molybdenum. 98 and xenon 136. Now to keep everything balanced we're going to have two neutrons and four beta particles, fast moving electrons, to keep everything balanced up. So the question then is uh, find the energy released in this nuclear fission reaction. Now, in order to do that, you need to be given the um, precise masses of the various particles. So the masses are, so for uranium, 390.2, times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So that's the mass of a single uranium-235 particle in the nucleus. Molybdenum, lighter because it's a daughter nucleus. Xenon. Six times ten to the minus twenty-seven, and a single neutron, one point six seven five times ten to the minus twenty-seven. Note, we're working here to four significant figures. We have to because the the lost mass is very, very small, and we won't detect it if we don't go to uh, a good number of significant figures, as you'll see. So, uh, solution. 
Well, when you're doing these sorts of problems, you must always separate out your working for data on the left-hand side of the equation from data on the right. So always set it out like this, left-hand side and right-hand side. Well, on the left-hand side, we've just got one uranium and one uh, neutron. So here's our uranium. That's all times 10 to the minus 27. And our neutron, of course. Now line up the digits so that the units, the tens and the hundreds, are in alignment. So in total, on the left-hand side, when you add these two together, you get 391.87. Now you can see that the four significant figures of the neutron has pushed us to six significant figures when we add them uh, together. Um, that's going to be necessary. So hold all of those significant figures. On the right hand side then, uh, we've got the molybdenum. 162.5 10 to the minus 27 the xenon 225.6 make sure you align the units the tenths the tens the hundreds etc and then we've got two neutrons remember it's two neutrons so that's three point Three five times ten to the minus twenty seven. All right. So when we work out what we've got on the right hand side, that turns out to give us three nine one point four five. 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So don't do any rounding at this point. Leave the rounding till the very, very last line. Well, the mass loss then, which we'll call M, is basically the mass before. Take away the mass after. And you'll see right away that the mass after is a little bit less than the mass before. And that's kilograms. Well, that then means that the mass loss is 0 0.425. Do this on your calculator. Times 10 to the minus seven kilograms. Once you've got the mass lost you can then apply the is mc squared in order to get the energy released. So that's 0 0.425 times 10 to the minus 27 times 3 times 10 to the 8 all squared. Do not forget to square the C. A very common mistake when you type all that into your calculator. You'll get 3.825 times 10 to the minus 27 joules. That's for one uh, fission. Doesn't seem like a lot, but 
there are many, many fissions going on per second. And that's how you work out the energy released in a fission reaction. Now just going back up to the original uh, fission reaction itself, this neutron that's coming in has to be a slow neutron as opposed to fast neutrons which are the type that come off in the reaction itself. If the neutrons are moving too quickly they don't get properly absorbed by the uranium 235 so it never actually becomes the uranium 236 that it is temporarily um, and you don't get the fission occurring. So um, in the real reactor then we need to find a mechanism for um, slowing these neutrons uh, down. Now there are various parts of the nuclear reactor itself that you need to be aware of. You'll find diagrams online. I'm not going to draw one now. But you should know about the following. So firstly, um, the coolant. And the coolant is often uh, water, usually, which carries heat energy away from the reactor core. So that's where the fission reaction is actually taking place. A huge amount of heat is generated as the mass loss is converted into uh, energy. And if that heat energy were not removed, the heat would build up to very high levels and melt the container surrounding the reactor. And that would be a meltdown, which is not good. So you need uh, a coolant. It's often water. There are other uh, substances sometimes used, but it's generally water. That takes the heat away um, to ultimately be converted into um, electricity. Uh, another uh, aspect of the reactor you need to be aware of is the containment vessel. This is made of um, reinforced concrete, several meters thick. with lead lining to reduce chance of any radiation escaping. So several meters of concrete with a lead lining. I mentioned earlier that the neutrons produced in the fission reaction were travelling quite fast, but they can't be used to cause fission unless they're moving more slowly. So to do that you need something called a moderator. And the moderator is uh, often made of graphite. And basically its job is it slows down the fast neutrons to become slow neutrons or further fissions in the chain uh, reaction. 
if we go back up to the original reaction again, you'll see that um, in the fission reaction there, there are three neutrons produced by the fission. Uh, if we were to allow each of those neutrons to be slowed down um, and to then go on and cause subsequent fissions, then one fission would lead to three neutrons, which gives you three fissions, which would then lead to nine fissions, which would lead to 27 and so on and so forth. You'd have a massively rapid exponential growth in fissions and a huge amount of energy released. That would be an uncontrolled chain reaction. So what we need to do is we need to absorb two of those neutrons and only allow one to survive to go on and cause another fission. That allows us to have one neutron causing one fission, leading to one neutron to one fission, and that's called a controlled chain reaction. And what we need to do the absorbing of uh, these neutrons, the excess neutrons, are the control rods. So their job, these um, typically made of boron, they absorb excess neutrons. allowing only one neutron per fission to survive, thereby creating what's called a controlled chain reaction. And to see how all of these fit together, uh, look into your PDF or look it up on the web and you'll see diagrams of a nuclear reactor. So that brings us to the end of the nuclear uh, fission section.